Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 22nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Usually when we are looking at RTF documents, one of the assumptions is that it's probably some kind of exploit in the sense that they're trying to exploit some kind of Microsoft Office vulnerability. Well, uh, DDA looked at an RTF document we received recently and for a change it didn't contain sort of this traditional type of exploit, instead just a phishing attack and DDA walks you through his tools RTF dump, for example, to figure out not just that it's probably not an exploit in the sense of a buffer overflow or anything like that, but just a phishing attack and then also to extract the phishing URL. And then we got a little bit more insight in the traffic on port 3,333. Now, I already mentioned that this particular port is often associated with mining pools, but it turns out that the Claymore miner for Windows also provides a remote monitoring and management interface on this port. And apparently, well, there are some vulnerabilities here. And this may actually be the real cause sort of of the scans that we have seen that they're not really going after the mining pools but instead after this software. Chinese security company NetLab360 came out uh, with an interesting write-up where they're looking in one of these botnets that's actively going after these Claymore miners. Now to make things a little bit more interesting here, Claymore mining equipment is really sort of more a device, uh, but it does actually run Windows. More typically, you tend to find Linux on devices like this, but in this case, no, it's a Windows. No password is required for the connection on port 3333, and uh, typically it's used for monitoring the mining equipment, but in older versions of the software, it can also use to actually perform actions on the equipment. You can, for example, restart the equipment, you can upload files, and then you have access to a number of other control operations. Like I said, this was turned off according to NetLab 360 in version 8.1 of the Claymore Miner. If we got a second a crypto coin story, uh, this one is about Everyal, at least that's how I think you pronounce this particular piece of malware, uh, was uh, found by Malware Hunter team and it actually manipulates the clipboard. It looks for and monitors your clipboard for strings that look like Bitcoin addresses and then essentially just changes them. So if you copy paste a Bitcoin address, it replaces it with one more suitable uh, to the attacker transferring Bitcoins into the attacker's account instead of your intended target. Pretty interesting and of course uh, we have seen this uh, before, also seen this uh, like with account numbers and such. Would be interesting to see what happens if you happen to copy paste a normal hash uh, because essentially those uh, Bitcoin addresses or those crypto coin wallet addresses are formatted like a hash of whatever hashing function that currency happens to use. And legal conditions for some of the bug bounty programs are again a matter of discussion and actually a talk at a recent Usenix conference did point out some of the difficulties in coming up with good meaningful conditions for these bug bounty programs. The problem here is that often the attacker isn't sufficiently indemnified for, for example, reverse engineering software, which may be illegal. Also, sometimes these bug bounty programs do have some interesting conditions that essentially prohibit just what the attacker is supposed to do. For example, here in Alibaba's bug bounty program, which does include a clause where no license or permission is given to any penetration or attack against any of Alibaba's systems. So essentially you're allowed to do a bug bounty or attack the system, but then you're again not to actually penetrate or attacking the systems. So the guidance here is if you are starting a bug bounty program, make sure that you have some reasonable conditions for it and explain to your lawyers exactly what you're trying to do here. 
Of course, typically a corporate lawyer's job is to protect the corporation, not necessarily a participant in a bug bounty program. And they like to have these clauses in there in order to reach out against some participants that are causing damage. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.